I have an urgent warning to deliver to the people of Britain about the safety of our streets. In just a few weeks, Al-Qaeda's top terror chief in the UK could be released from prison after taking part in a so-called de-radicalisation programme, where he'll claim he now doesn't want to murder us all in cold blood after all. Rangzib Ahmed, once said to be Osama bin Laden's top operative in Europe, was the first person in the UK to be convicted of directing terrorism. He was jailed for life with a minimum 10-year term in 2008 for plotting the mass slaughter of Brits and was caught with a book of terror contacts written in invisible ink and a rucksack that contained traces of explosives. His scheme was revealed with the discovery of three diaries, which were found to contain details and phone numbers of key al-Qaeda operatives. Since then, he's received, of course, he has almost £1 million in legal aid, your money, to help fund his bid for freedom, and he's not far off. Rochdale-born Ahmed was rejected for parole in September 2022 after officials judged he was far too dangerous to be released. However, he's now been approved for a new parole board hearing where he's expected to argue he's a changed man thanks to a rehab programme that's taught him to be a good person. The hearing takes place on June 20th, just under four weeks from now. And if officials agree to release him, Ahmed is likely to be freed by the end of the month. So it's no secret that around 90% of the 40,000 extremists on MI5's watch list are Islamists like Bin Laden's man here in the UK. And only a, fac uh, a fraction can ever be permanently watched at any one time. I spoke to the parole board about Ahmed and they confirmed his case would be heard next month. They said a panel will carefully examine a huge range of evidence, including details of the original crime and any evidence of behaviour change, as well as exploring the harm done and impact the crimes had on victims. Evidence from witnesses, including probation officers, psychiatrists and psychologists, officials supervising the offender in prison, as well as victim personal statements, are then given at the hearing. Parole reviews are undertaken thoroughly and with extreme care. Protecting the public is our number one priority. Well, that's all very well, but Ahmed's freedom bid comes just days after it emerged another jailed terrorist is trying to secure an exit from prison. Parviz Khan, who threatened to kidnap and behead a British Muslim soldier, will also appear before the parole board next week. So the last thing this country needs right now is extremist scumbags back walking amongst us. I trust the parole board in both these cases will do the right thing. I'm going to get the thoughts now of counter-terror expert, former head of the National Counter-Terror Security Office, Chris Phillips. Good evening, Chris. Thanks for joining me. How concerned evening, should we be about the potential of this Al-Qaeda monster being released potentially at the end of June? Yeah, very concerned. And it's amazing. He's uh, made a remarkable de-radicalisation in, in the last wow. year or so. From being too dangerous to release onto the streets, uh, it seems that he may now well be, be safe after all. One good news for the, for the prison service, I suppose. They've got one less dangerous person inside the prison to radicalise others. But of course, him on the streets is, is really, really dangerous to the public. And we can joke about it. But these people are not de-radicalised. They, they, they are very, very dangerous people. And, and even if he doesn't go on to commit other offences, the, the chances of him radicalising others in the community are very, very high. Well, yeah, of course, as you said, I echo your words. How can you go from one minute wanting to slaughter Britons en masse in cold blood and the next a couple of months <clears> having <throat> gone through a programme? You say, well, no, I'm OK, I, I don't want to do that anymore. That's fine. You make a really good point, Chris, because uh, new stats from, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, revealed that one in five Muslim prisoners is now white, which was sparking fears Islamist gangs are behind a surge of conversions in prison. So even if this guy does get out, there's a chance that he could have been for the last 10 years in prison um, converting and brainwashing other lags with Islamist extremism. Yeah, unfortunately, our criminal justice system is just not set up to deal with people that want to go and commit mass murder. And, and to release him into the community is taking such a risk that um, really the criminal justice system needs to be amended to say some people just aren't fit to be released no matter what. Can we talk briefly about the job that MI5 and the security services have in this country? Because the, the terror watch list is vast. And as far as I understand, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, there's not enough agents to cover them all at once 24-7. Is that right? No, absolutely. And, and uh, it's not just uh, MI5. Uh, it's the police uh, counter-terrorism units uh, and the surveillance teams. It takes an enormous amount of manpower, woman power, to, uh, to follow just one person. Of course, there are technical measures they can use these days, but 
but we know for a fact that they're, they're not able to monitor even even a, a, a portion of the very dangerous people that are that are out there, and to make that so much worse by releasing someone who's already a terrorist. Why was this guy given a life sentence, but with a minimum term of ten years? What happened to proper justice in this country? Well. Uh, you know, it, it does make me laugh, really. The, I think the prison sentencing systems are, are just ridiculous with, you know, you, you think someone's going to go to prison for a long time and then they're out usually halfway through. It's it's just telling lies to the public, I think. And, Do, uh, and if we don't get our system right, if we don't build enough prisons to keep these people locked up, then we aren't going to be safe. It's as simple as that. Have you any idea about this rehabilitation programme in, in prisons? I mean, trying to, you know, de-radicalise him. Any idea what kind of things he would have gone through? Because as I mentioned in the top of the show a few minutes ago, one minute he wants to kill us all, and the next he's gone to a few training courses and he says, well, no, I've changed my mind, I'm OK, let me out. Yeah, well, he would do, wouldn't he? He's not going to get out unless he, he says that. So he knows that. And we've seen it before. We've seen people that play the system. You know, we, we put our faith in the parole board to do a good job. Uh, clearly, you know, we know that terrorists have been released and committed uh, terror attacks within days sometimes of uh, of them being released. So so this is, it is a bit like playing um, games with our safety, I think. Yeah, OK. Chris, really appreciate you being with us. Thank you for joining the show. Nice to speak to you,